Welcome to the Black Eyed Barber Show. It's another one. We're still on lockdown, but uh, we've got quite a few more interesting guests for this week. So, this week's news, fellas. What do you think to this one? So, I saw some social media stuff earlier this week. Andy Ruiz says he's in negotiations to join Canelo's camp and Canelo's trainer. But they've not actually had any conversations yet. <laughs> so I didn't know what that meant. He says he's in negotiations to join, but he's not actually spoke to him. So I don't know how that works out. But I just thought, you tell me what you think. But do you know if I were that set up at Canelo's, which is obviously running like clockwork, would you want somebody who doesn't seem to be that disciplined like Ruiz in gym with I think, I think it's that Mexican connection they've got. Uh, and those two are pretty pally publicly anyway. Uh, but that's probably just publicly. Uh, I think uh, for Ruiz, Ruiz is, is now in a position where financially safe. So he can, he can, he can play silly buggers. He can, he can hold out until he gets what he wants. But eventually that fear, that figure that, that he's playing with, that four million or five million, that figure's going to drop as time goes on. The first fight, he'll make on it. But then after that, um, um, that, that figure's going to drop what he's trying to play with but he's in a good position uh, uh, the way things are going you don't know how long that money will last what he's got if he's going to last forever five years ten years you don't know what he's gonna, how he's spending it uh, in regards to the, uh, joining the Canelo camp uh, talk's cheap you know it's a great idea it's like me saying to you um, I'm, I'm, I'm in talks about uh, riding the Tour de France I've not got a bike yet uh, I'm just, you know, but, well, I mean, talks, who am I talking to? You know, I've not even sat on a back and sat on a seat yet. So I think... Uh, uh, you think they'd want him in there, though, John? I don't know, because, again, um, again, it's a case of, uh, you don't know how close or how tight the relationship is. Um, and uh, I, I would be surprised. It, it's talk, talk cheap. I remember last time we had, when we had Billy Joe on, you know, if, if, if you associate your name with somebody, and, and you put it out there as though we're doing this, that, and the other, then it gets people interested, keeps in the news. Usually you find these things happen once they've happened. Uh, and yeah. when you're telling people, oh, we're in talks, because it doesn't really, uh, that doesn't really sell it to me. Uh, let me see the done deal before you talk about doing a deal. What do you think, Cam, would you want him in there? If you were, if you were training Canelo now, or you were like Canelo's head of camp, and Ruiz wanted to join it, we'd obviously yeah. then we're fooled in that. Would you want him in there, Anne? <laughs> I think you've got to be honest there, as in like, and as much, listen, Canelo generates enough money for uh, the Canelo team, but let's be honest, and there's very few trainers who would turn down the chance, and even there'll be trainers who said they would turn down the chance, but once the money, or once the figure's put in front of them, they would soon do a U-turn. Joey Bate, just, I'm not saying they would, but just say, for instance, 10% of my next person, or 5% of my next person, there's very few trainers who would turn it down, let's be honest, and but not just that, he's a talented heavyweight. You know, he lost twice. Once he could have got the decision against Parker. And then uh, second time, he lost his world title 20. Joshua, so there's huge fights out there for him. And, um, you know, when you, when you go to uh, the style of the trainer and how they seem to fight, Rui certainly seems to fit the Canelo, Team Canelo way of fighting. Do you know the fights that have in there? I know Garcia is a little bit different, but just going off Canelo... And then uh, each other fly with it. Short, aggressive, you know, tactical punch shot. It fits all over, you know, it fits all over. Um, yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes in one way, doesn't it? It's just that... Uh, yeah, I mean, Manny Robles thing did as well. And let's not forget what a great job he done. But if if you was going to send Ruiz to someone, if you was an advisor, if, and you could pick any trainer in the world at all, you, you'd certainly... That would be near the front, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they want to be near the front of it, you know, stylistically wise. Like you said, it ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, uh, so as, as I said before, I just think when I hear things like this, I think usually you, it's when the deal's done, that's when you hear the stories. It's when I'm talking about this and talking about yeah. get on with the deal, you know. Yeah. You, you know I, don't I don't know if it's to entice anybody else or it's to, to put pressure on anybody else, uh, or you need to be associated with the Canelo's camp to keep yourself relevant. Uh, but I just don't, I don't get that story. I don't get that, that style. I kind of get the story. We just I did it and said, I'm in negotiations to join, but I've not made contact with anybody yet. <laughs> we just, I'm just thinking like, about well, it, yeah. yeah think like, asked, Cindy Crawford's asked him, could have come out on a date with me? I've just not asked her yet. <laughs> 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 it 
were just the strange one, I thought. But we'll see, we'll watch how that develops because I really like Ruiz as a fucking fight. If he's motivated, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah. So another one, social media's blown up again this week, Johnny, with your best mate, Dillian oh. White, Andy Ruiz. Oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah, of course, because we're talking about offers that have been put on the table. Uh, I gather, um, uh, has that yet been four or five? Or, or, or Ruiz says he's been offered five. Uh, no, uh, Dylan says he's been offered uh, five. I think Eddie's put an offer to him. Yeah. Um, listen, listen, if they're talking, they're talking. If it's real figures they, they, they're putting together, great. Uh, but again, let's put pen to paper. You know, the, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, bad beef going on with those two. And I think, I rate Dylan. I rate Dylan's hunger to say, come on, let's have it. Let's get in there. It could, because I think this, if anything, if, if this doesn't tell the public or anybody that this Dylan deserves a crack uh, and, and well right a crack to, to box in the world, the, the pull of the world heavyweights, him fighting Ruiz. And if you beat Louis, Ruiz as well, you know, that's where you, you just can't ignore it, no matter who you are, what you are. Uh, but Dylan's the kind of guy where you run him, he'll, he'll chase you, he'll come back for it, you know, and he'll not back off, he'll not go quiet. Yeah. Uh, he'll fight anybody and everybody. I just don't, I just, I don't know, it just doesn't sit me, you know, this, what do you think, Can you know when fighters are themselves, like, arguing over money and negotiations on social yeah. media, it's like... I, I think that, like you say, a lot of it is to build up the fight, so if it does happen, it looks like there is a bit of genuine bad blood there. Yeah. Um, I mean, Johnny just mentioned it then. I mean, Dillian's waiting sort of forever. It now looks like February, we were talking about this February uh, 2021. Obviously, we don't know what's going on with the current situation. So, if that then gets put back to the summer of 2021, which it, it easily could do, and I hope not for his sake, it easily could do, the next best fight out there, other than an anti Joshua fight, is, is the Andy Ruiz fight. And you could argue for Ruiz. You know, there's, there's not outside the champion. Dillian's a big, he's a big name now, and I think social media. We know how big social media is. Dillian's got a huge social media following as well. It's um, I, I think a lot of people sort of whether they're just staying busy or whatever, they're enjoying the back and forth between them. But for this, we want to see the fight. We don't just want to see them back and forth, you know, arguing over social media. We want an end product, don't we? And that's the fight. Yeah. I'll tell you what I heard. I did some sniffing around today. I heard that an offer were made to Ruiz in January, but pretty low. It, it were like kind of ignored, and they've, they've already decided on another fight. And then when Eddie realised they were taking another fight already to save face, he offered more money, even though he knew they'd already gone in a different direction. That's what I. Well, yeah. I know. I think, I think this right now. It's it's uh, keeping one's oneself relevant, getting all the big fights tied up, or potentially tied up on paper to dangle that client for the client for the, the 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 fans, the TV companies, uh, and everybody to say, right, you know, we've got something juicy to look forward to. So at the moment, again, I keep saying, talk's cheap until pen to pen, until pen goes to paper, and and nobody knows when these things are going to happen. We can they can kind of calculate. July, August, September, October, whatever. But nobody knows what's going to happen until we know what's happening generally anyway. But you know what I did think were interesting in it? One thing I did pick up on when Dillian put a copy of Eddie's message up to him with the offer on and that it were for to be in the States. And I thought that were interesting because obviously then, by then, if this COVID, this coronavirus had never happened. So it had been in States on the zone and then the zone UK had been in action in Britain. So would the entire yeah. family or gone on to the zone and not on Sky. I thought that yeah. were interesting. That were there. Well, that's what we're going to see how the, how the cards land when uh, the zone actually have launched and, and the shows are on. Um, we'll, we'll really see how, how the state of play when a big fight comes on, you know, a big fight, like an AJ fight, like a, a Dillian fight, something like that. Then we'll see what the, 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 the state of play is <clears throat> with the TV companies. We don't know what's being said behind closed doors. Um, um, I'm given the impression as though... Uh, uh, we'll, we'll still have the content. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know the business side of it. <coughs> but um, but it'd be interesting to see how, uh, how things like. Yeah. So another one now. This is your best mate, and well, your best mate, Tony Bellow, said apparently yesterday he looks at Andy Ruiz and thinks, should I come back for that? I'd just embarrass him. I, I agree. I, I hear that. I like that. Yeah. I actually, not, 
No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I, when Andy Ruiz, <laughs> when Andy Ruiz... No, I'm not beat, having it. Uh, when Andy Ruiz beat Anthony Joshua, right, yeah. and, and if you know you're boxing, you know for fact, Andy Ruiz is a tricky handful, but he can be outboxed. And Anthony Joshua showed how to do that the second fight. Now, Tony Bellew, we look at Tony Bellew, and Tony Bellew, it's very hard to give him the respect, of a heavyweight respect. They're getting his spar with the likes of David Price regularly. They're getting his spar with the heavyweights regularly. Tony Bellew's a decent boxer. To come out of retirement, <clears throat> I actually, I can't, can't not see it. I could see, I could see him really fancying it. He knows it's a dangerous handful, but he knows that the risk reward, reward outweighs the risk. And um, come on, who no. side are you? No, I genuinely think there's a chance it could happen, and I'll tell you why. You think he could beat him? Do I think he could beat him? I think, obviously, I would, I would be in Bellew's corner, and, and I do think, you know, you've got, like Johnny said, he's got the style, he would have the style on the back foot to give her Ruiz kittens, but listen, there's no denying Ruiz is a top-class proven heavyweight. But do I think, I, I honestly think there's a genuine really good chance of it happening and I think it might even have a bigger chance of happening than Ruiz Dillian White and some people might not aware of that but to uh, Tony Bellew Andy Ruiz sells Bellew like since he's retired his profile in, really he's probably gone up he's we see last night he's on um, SAS again and he's been getting a bit of sparring with Amphia Turner and stuff like that but I think he's growing, and honestly, I would not rule out Bellew and Andy Ruiz. Um, depending on this, late in the year or early next, I'm saying it now, I wouldn't rule it out. Might be wrong, and I know Tony's like, no, it wouldn't. Missy would kill me, and she would, but I wouldn't rule it out for them because there'd be a massive payday in it. There is, but I don't see any way he beats Ruiz. Well, I mean, listen, listen, it, 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 it's it's... Most fighters won't put themselves in that position uh, unless they really thought they could pull it off. I could see Tony Bellew pulling it off. He's a, he's a, he's a good little, he's a fast boxer and he's, he's got movement as well. So I can see him pulling it off. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. So last bit of news today, really. Did you see, we're just in time, really. We're announced today that France have cancelled all sports until September. Football, rugby, cycling, boxing, Tennis, everything's cancelled till at least September. Yeah. And then well, Belgium, Holland have also cancelled all football leagues now. They're just they're gonna be null and void. So it just it makes you wonder where we're gonna end up, doesn't it? It does and I'm still I've I've heard today there's a chance listen, when I'm saying there's a chance, there's talk of trying to get a show out in early July. But it means nothing. It means nothing as we keep saying until the government Mention that it's yeah. not an unlicensed show, which is just going to be a matter of turning up on the door, buying tickets, or like that. It's going to be on the platform. The government have got to give it the go ahead, haven't they? So, at the end of the day, that, none of that matters unless they're going on a private island. And it's like me and you said earlier, and this is one what do you think as well, Johnny? If you weren't working on a show where you were, if you two weren't working on a show, so you're a bit more isolated. And they said in four weeks, yeah, coronavirus, it's still going round, but it's, it's not as prominent. So, we're going to run shows. Would you want to go in a building with 20,000 people shouting, screaming and spitting if you were sat in stands? Well, that, exactly. And this is what they've got to consider. This is what got to, yeah, that's, that's what you've got to consider. So, even though the, the, the intent is, is genuine and the intent is right, you've got to realistically consider, can this happen? Would, 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 you, would you have that for, say, for, 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 for health and safety? Would it realistically happen? So, but it, what I mean is, John, even if they signed it off, you as a grown up adult man, a mature man, and me and Anthony say, you think would twice you about it. You, you would think twice about it. You would think twice about putting yourself in that situation. So, you, you, you um, even though the hunger's there, you know, it's a serious situation, but you would think twice about it. So, I, I, I if you're asking me, would I right now, um, <clears throat> I'd seriously consider, I'd seriously consider it until things settle down, until I've got securities. Of, of vaccines and stuff like that. It's just a worrying time. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't rush back in, um, would you? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rush back in. Um, I'll be honest, like uh, Johnny said, you know, as much as I'd love to be there, at this moment in time, it's, it, it wouldn't be safe. Not, not with, you know, a full crowd. 
But as you're talking about sort of live boxing, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but there's a show in Nicaragua. Um, it was the strangest setup I've ever seen. The, the fighters come to the ring with a mask. The audience was, there was two spaces in between every fan. I just, yeah, it was changed. So I don't know if any of you have seen that. I mean, I don't know what... Were they, were they spraying crowders and people were coming in and stuff like that? I mean, that was another one, yeah. It was, uh, <coughs> imagine at the old two hour at the Manchester Arena. You it don't fill you full of confidence when you go in, does it? <laughs> yeah. You know, like they're, they're in full nuclear suits spraying everybody on the way in. You'd be like, do I really want to do this? Um, plus, plus you're, you're liable. What if you actually, what if, okay, what if you actually went there and you contracted it? Who's then liable? Uh, is, are you are you as a fan going to go in, uh, put yourself in that situation? Or is the promoter? It's crazy, isn't it? Well, this is what I think with Premier League, and I was saying to a pal of mine who works in football, you only need you only need them to be forced back to go and play, and one kid get it, or one kit man get it, or one physio get it, and die. And there's going to be lawsuits, isn't there, flying absolutely here, there, and how would they get medical insurance for it? Yes, it's just yeah. So. So Cheltenham was on just before all this. I think it was the last big event, sporting event I had here in the UK uh, before this lockdown. <clears throat> and, and in hindsight, they, they regret uh, letting the event go ahead uh, because they, they, some say it was, it was probably part of the reason why this thing, you know, started to spread even quicker. Uh, who's liable? You know, who, who gives a nod to say, yeah, you can go ahead? You know, it's such a, such a big event. So I think it, I think they, they, they the uh, the ratifications of what could possibly happen, who could get financially uh, affected by this sued wise, you know, you've got to keep, keep all these things into account. They need assurances by the government before they can say, right, they said we can do it, so we're doing it. Otherwise, we're liable. Yeah, be uh, be interesting to see how they do it, but I think it's it's like everybody's scrambling around and looking, aren't they? But I just think it looks so. It's it's a lot more complicated than what. Anything on it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, uh, it, the sentiment's great, but in reality, we've got to think about what we can get away with, what we can't get away with. Yeah. So let's see. Like, we'll keep it. We want some sport on, but we don't know. We don't know when. But I just thought that were ominous today. France, Holland, and Germany doing that. Yeah. I think that's uh, sorry, France, Holland, and Belgium. Sorry, they. Uh, I just thought that were an ominous sign and doing that. That was that was September. They, I know they've cancelled all the leagues and stuff like. We're, we're, again, we was the last one. I think. Well, you're buzzing. You're a Man U fan, aren't you? So it means Liverpool don't win title. You're Maybe. buzzing. Honestly, I think I've seen people today saying that would be, you know, that'd really lift the nation if the Premier League announced that. <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, I don't know. Listen, it's all joking aside. For any Liverpool fans listening, but. I don't know, like, if France have done that with the Football League, um, Holland have. Belgium. Um, I do, Belgium as well. Like, I just don't know, like, sort of the knock-on effect. Do you know, how could we finish ours? Yeah, you'd look, politically, it won't look great, would it? I know. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. So, see what happens with that. Let's, let's do it. We'll monitor it. So, Johnny's entering to order France. He says, we'll definitely keep his eye on that. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll have a go. I think, uh, I think they've got a buy that strong enough to keep my way. Oh, you've done one at stages, haven't you? You're on your way. No, no, I'll never do that again. I can't, but hey, listen, I would never do that again. Not even I, as a joke. I watched it today on YouTube. I watched it for a laugh. 